All right, so we are still moving through the first book of the Bible, Genesis. Um, we are in chapter 47. I am going to pick up at the end and roll into the start of chapter 48 and probably cover the majority of 48. So this is Genesis chapter 47, verses 27 through 31. And we are going to tackle the whole chapter of 48. So it's verses 1 through 22. And so in um, the start of this, Jacob, who is the father of Joseph, he traveled back into Egypt. He lives in the land of Goshen. And it says that he has lived in country Goshen. And during there, it says they have possessions and grew and multiplied exceedingly. They are becoming a nation. They are no longer the 70 people who walked into Egypt. But the grands and great grands are getting to start to stack up in numbers. And it says that Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. So 17 years have passed since they've come into this land. And it says Jacob is now 147 years old. He is 147 years old. And it says that he is drawing time for him to die. Like it is coming to a point where he has lived a lot of years and God is like, come on home, have your rest. And so what he does is he calls his son Joseph to him and he says, like, I want you to promise me something. He says, put your hand under my thigh, which we saw way, way back um, in uh, with, with Abraham um, trying to find a wife for his son. Like, put your hand under my thigh. But this is effectively like, look, I want you to connect with me on this. I want you to understand and be a part of me. And I want you to carry this thing out for me. I need this. This is like a pinky promise level. Like, I need you to connect and, and give me your oath on this. Um, and he says, look, don't bury me in Egypt, man. I don't, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. Like, promise me that I'll get to be buried with my fathers. There is a space where um, Abraham and Sarah are buried. There is a space where Leah is buried. There is a space where... Um, he buried his father, Isaac, and there is a space where these, these families are. He's like, take me back there. I don't want to be buried in Egypt. I don't know these people. Y'all ain't going to come visit me because I know God is going to pull y'all out of Egypt at some point. You're not going to come back here to visit me. You're not going to come back here to remember me. Take me to where, you know, people know to go <laughs> look for me. Um, and so he makes this promise to him. And then in the start of 48, Joseph is told that his father is very sick and it's at a point now where you know we're we're counting down days and so I need you to go and talk to your dad like you need to go have your moment y'all need to work this thing out um and not that they have anything crazy going on but he is just telling he has been made aware that there's not much time left so like go talk to your dad this is typically where we've seen the promise of God pass the blessing of God pass from the father to the son that he chooses. Um, and this is how Jacob got this when his father was like, hey, I'm I'm old and I'm going to die soon. Let me bless my son. And so this is when Jacob received the blessing, kind of in this kind of moment. And so Joseph brings his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And they're both born in Egypt to an Egyptian mother. And um, when he brings him in, he talks to his father and his father kind of, hey, you know, they got a little memory lane. You got to have a little conversation about what the Lord has brought you through. And so that's what he sees. He says right here that, um, <clears throat> God appeared to me. I've had visions of the Lord. The Lord has spoken to me. I have prayed and he has, he has had, we've had some face-to-face -face conversations and he made me some promises. And he said that I'm going to make you fruitful and multiply you. And he said, I'm going to make a multitude of people. And that I'm going to give this land that you walk on to you as an everlasting position, possession. He is telling him the promise that God gave him. This is the same promise that God gave his father and his grandfather before him. He is giving him the words that God has given him. And he is reaffirming his faith that God is A, going to do this thing. And that B, he has already done what he said he would do for him. And so um, he sees that 
he talks about the sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. And so the first thing is, is that Jacob acknowledges they were born in a foreign land to a foreign mother. And what he does is because Joseph is sold into slavery. So Joseph lives his entire life as a slave because he is owned by somebody else. Even though he has a position of authority, power, and prosperous life, it looks real good. Um, he is technically still a slave and owned by somebody else. He belongs to Egypt. Um, his sons are adopted back in. And so in this moment, in verse four, sorry, verse five, it says your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Now, I want to point out something really quickly before we kind of get into that. The sons are Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh is the oldest. Ephraim is the youngest. But in verse 5, when Jacob talks about them, he calls them Ephraim and Manasseh. He reverses their order. Now, Jacob, of course, is the second son. And his father before him was technically the second son. He is his mother's first son, but he is the second son of his father. And so he was, he says that, you know, they were born into Egypt before I got here, but they are mine. He is adopting them back in. I don't care how they were born. I don't care how they were raised. I don't care. None of these things. I'm adopting them back into the faith. They are Israelites through me. I'm adopting them back in. And I'm giving them a position. I am, it says, they are mine as Reuben and Simon. Simeon, I like saying Simeon. Um, Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. Literally, he is saying, these are my two oldest sons. And these are your two oldest sons. And so what I'm going to do is give them a position of the two oldest sons for me. I'm, I'm adopting them back to me. I'm bringing them back to this family. They're no longer Egyptians and following this Egyptian line. They are here. They belong to your father's family. And so this is how we see them enter into the tribes. And they are each given their own. They are each their own tribe. Um, there is a tribe of Manasseh and there's a tribe of Ephraim. And so they're Ephraimites. <laughs> that sounds weird to say it. But they they each have a tribe in the 12 tribes. They are represented there. And so um, he's like, I don't care what anybody called them before. They mine now. They Israelite now. I don't care how egyptian -y they think they are. They Hebrew today. Um, and so he, again, talks about um, where he was and, and some of the things that that happened throughout his life. And he talks about losing Rachel in the land of Canaan. Um, and that he had to bury her along the way because she died along the travels. And so he points out as, as a point, remember, this is where your mom is. Don't let this be forgotten. This is a space where um, she was buried. And it's just, you know, he's imparting legacy. He's imparting wisdom, things that he knows and remembers that are important, that are important to him. He is sharing that with, his son so that he's the memories don't die with him. And so in verse eight, um, Israel, he goes from being Jacob again to being Israel because this moment when he's getting ready to do this, this is him calling the legacy. This is him re re calling the promise. This is him passing on something specific to um, this blessing that he's carried is being passed on into these new generations. And so, um, it says he holds Joseph's sons and says, who are these? He, his eyesight is weak. He cannot see well. And he's like, I know I got two boys here. So tell me who's who, you know, I got a lot of grands and great grands running around. Which ones did you bring me today? Because he cannot see as well as he could before. It says that his eyes were dim because of age. And so he brought them and he kissed them and he hugged them. Like this is, this is, Paul, Paul, this is granddad, this is Pop Pop right here. He just hugging and kissing the babies because he understands where he is in life. He understands that his time is drawn to a close. And this is an opportunity to just give a little bit extra love. Hug your babies. Let Pop Pop, you know, I don't, men, I don't know what the thing was or why it was, but you're allowed to hug and kiss your kids appropriately. You're allowed to show them love and respect you're allowed to be good to them. You're allowed to be the teddy bear that you want to be. You can be that to them. It doesn't make you soft. It doesn't make them hard-headed. It doesn't spoil them. It lets them know that they are loved and they can be. They can trust you and they can be trusted. And so um, 
Israel says to Joseph, even though I had not thought it was possible to ever see you again, God made me, made it so I can see you and see your kids. Like it's so, I'm so grateful. Uh, he still is, is thanking God, still in praise mode because he got to see his son. I never thought I'd see you again. And not only did I get to see you again, I got to see you and your kids. And so Joseph brought him before his father. And his father is in the bed. So they're facing each other. They have opposite left and rights. Okay. So we're going to talk through this. Hopefully I can make it make sense. And so um, Joseph is basically sitting at the edge of the bed. Like he's sitting on the side of the bed and is facing like this. And Joseph is walking. So his back is to where the camera would be. So his back is here. He's not facing him. He's they, they, you know, face to face. And so his boys are on either side of him. So because of this, and he understands that there's a blessing. He put his oldest son on his left side. So he would be at his father's right side. So I know the camera does weird things, but this is my right hand. And so what Joseph does is when he approaches, he approaches with his son on his oldest son on his left hand. So the right hand will go directly to him. Because that's the right hand will bestow the blessing for the oldest. The right hand will bestow the promise and the gift that goes to him. And so it says that Israel, and so he had Manasseh, the oldest, on his left side. And he had Ephraim, the youngest, on his right side. And so that his father would reach out and touch them like this. But what ends up happening is 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 um israel crosses his hands he can't see that well he doesn't know which one is which but when he puts his hands out to touch the boys he crosses his arms he doesn't do like this the way joseph anticipated and had his sons lined up for he crosses his arms so that his right hand is now going to ephraim which is the youngest of the two and so it says um, in verse 14, Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and the left hand upon Manasseh's head, um, guiding his hands wittingly. He knew what he was doing. Um, and he blessed Joseph and said, uh, he blessed Joseph. So he prayed for him and was like, look, before my father's Abraham, Abraham and Isaac, Abraham and Isaac I walked, I followed the God they told, they taught me. I had an encounter with God. I know him to be true. And I worshiped him my whole life. I did what I was supposed to do when it came to that. And I gave it to my sons. Um, and he's, he's again, affirming, like confirming this promise. Like in verse 16, he said, let my name be named with them. I did what I was supposed to do. Let me be one of the forefathers of this of this this faith. Let me be one of the forefathers of this tribe, this great nation of people. And he says, and um, let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Let these sons, I put 12 sons on this earth. Thank God I have to keep all 12 into adulthood and they all have children. Let them continue to grow. Let the blessing that God gave Abraham that got passed to Isaac, that got passed to me. Let this promise that has been through generations continue to grow and multiply and affect and be great in this group of people. And then Joseph, it says in 17, Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim. He realizes because his head is bowed, he is receiving this blessing. This is a prayer that is over his life. And he realizes that his dad's arms are crossed and he goes to fix his father's hands. And he and his father says, no, in verse 18. And Joseph said to his father, not so, my father, this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused. He said, no, he said, no, I know it. I know which one is which. I know who is who. But he also shall become a great people. He also shall become great, but truly his younger brother will be greater than he and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. This is not a nation of people. He is nations of people. He recognizes and understands that his hands are crossed on purpose. It said it was done wittingly. 
It was done on purpose. And so when Joseph goes to uncross his hands and he's like, no, 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 you put your right hand on the head of the youngest. You put your right hand on Ephraim's head. And his dad said, nope, I'm not going to move it. I know that your oldest son is going to be great, but your younger son is going to be greater. And he, I, I'm, I'm blessing them in the way that I'm supposed to. God has shown me this thing and I can't tell you all of it. I can't give you everything, but I know that this blessing is moving in the way that it's supposed to. And it says in verse 20 that he blessed him that day. Saying in the Israel bless of uh, saying God make the Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. So he said, God, no more are they going to be Manasseh and Ephraim. They're going to be Ephraim and Manasseh. He swapped the order of them. Now, the last two verses, 21 and 22. Of, the, of chapter 48, it says, and Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again to the land of your fathers. I'm not going to see it, but God is going to bring our people out. This is the promise that he gave me that made me come in here in the first place. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above your brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and my bow. He says, you got a little extra inheritance for you. Something else in here for you. When it all, when it's all said and done, the wheel is written out. The thing is done, and you're going to get a, an extra blessing because while your brothers ate at my table for years, you missed twenty years of meals. While they got clothes and shoes, while they had provision, while they had everything they needed, while I blessed them regularly when they had babies and got married and things like that, you didn't get that from me. So I'm giving you a little extra. But what he says is, in verse 21, God shall be with you and bring you again to the land of your fathers. You're coming out of here. You're not going to stay here forever. The people that were brought in won't stay here forever. This is not forever. You won't stay here forever. This is not forever for you. So what I want to know, what I want to do in this very quick recap, um, <laughs> uh, it has come a point where we are getting ready to say goodbye to Jacob slash Israel. And so he calls his son to him. He talks to him, kind of gives him a rundown of some things that he's like, it's important for you to remember. Your mother is married here. Um, you know, God has blessed me. He promised me. I did what I, I knew to do. I had an encounter with God. I know and I trust and I believe in him. And I am expecting you to know, trust and believe in God too. And I am promising you some things and I want to bless you and bless your children. And so he blesses him and gives him kind of the, the, the forward move of the blessing that is on the Israelites. And he brings his two sons, um, Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh is the oldest. Ephraim is the second. And what Jacob does or Israel does is he adopts them back into their faith, back into their people. They are now members of our family. I know I wasn't there when they were born. I know we didn't raise them. I know we didn't do that. But these are your sons. And while I can't claim you because you're technically still a slave, I can claim your sons who were born free, who were born Egyptian. I can claim them on back and they can be members of my family. And they are, in fact, because they're your two oldest, they're going to take the place of my two oldest. So I'm going to demote my two oldest sons. I'm going to demote my sons and, and move yours up. And so... After that, he blesses the boys. And when he does, he sets Manasseh, the Manasseh, the oldest, under Ephraim, the youngest. So they're no longer Manasseh and Ephraim. They are Ephraim and Manasseh. And so um, he does say that they're both going to be great, but the youngest is going to be great to work. And so he also prophesies to them that, you know, God promised me that if he brought us in, he would bring us out. And he did it for me before when I was with my uncle Laban. And so I'm trusting that he's going to do it for you now. And I'm giving you this so you know that this isn't the end for you. You don't die. You, you don't you don't die in Egypt and stay here forever. This is not forever for you. There's something more and there's something more for our people. There is still a promise for our people. And so um, what I want you to remember in all of this is your Egypt is not forever. It doesn't matter if it was good going in. It doesn't matter if it was bad going in. It doesn't matter how you got there or why. If God said, I'm going to bring you through it, he's going to bring you through it. This is not forever for you. 
This is not the end. And even if you don't get to see the promise, God is going to make sure that the promise is fulfilled. He will not break a promise. He is not going to go against. He ain't going to lie. He ain't going to change. He ain't going to do none of those things. If God said he's going to bring you through, he's going to bring you through it. Y'all rest in that and be blessed.